Daily Spoons to Kai Matthews YouTube channel with a very special message for our viewers in Iceland. Wrap up. Right, you're watching this month's Retro Roundup, where we are going to take a nostalgic trip down memory lane and explore the world of retro video games that at some point in their life were the hot new shit, don't you know? Steady lad, I've told you about course language before. Now, if you're a seasoned retro video game fan or a newcomer to the scene, we have got a treat in store for you. This month's Retro Roundup starts with, again, another title that is celebrating its 40th birthday. On your mark. Track and Field, also known as Hyper Olympics in Japan and Europe an Olympic-themed sports video game developed by Konami for arcades. The Japanese release sported an official license for the 1984 Summer Olympics. In Europe, the game was initially released under the Japanese title Hyper Olympics in 1983, before re-releasing under the US title Track and Field in early 1984. Now then, the arcade version of Track and Field appears in the book of 1001 video games you must play before you die by Tony Mott, editor of the Cracking Edge magazine. Now, I've got to say, Tony lad, in 2023, where am I going to play the arcade version of this game? Yeah, you didn't think of that, did you? No. Right. The Atari 2600 version came packaged with the Track and Field controller. The controller was also sold separately. The NES version combined the four events portrayed in the Famicom version of Track and Field with four events from its follow-up Hyper Sports, which included the high jump that was lost in the Famicom version. Ah, uh, wrap up. I rather like that one. Now. Where was I? September 1993. Ah yes, and in September 1993, people were playing. I realized the moment I fell into the fissures that the book would not be destroyed as I had planned. Missed a graphic adventure masterpiece crafted by the talented Miller brothers Robin and Randy. This immersive game was developed by Cyan Inc. and published by Broderbund, marking its debut exclusively for the Macintosh platforms. In Mist, players embark upon a thrilling journey as they use a special book to transport themselves to the enigmatic island known as Mist. Through intricate puzzle solving, players gain access to other captivating realms, referred to as ages. These alternate worlds gradually unveil the rich backstory of the game's characters. The game's mechanics involve player interaction with various objects and navigation through different locations by simply clicking on meticulously crafted pre-rendered imagery. Mist were best-selling PC game title until 2002, with 6 million units sold, widely regarded as one of the three killer apps that accelerated the sales of the CD-ROM drive. Now, the other two being The Seventh Guest and Doom. And obviously, because of that, it's no surprise Mist appears in book, 1001 video games you must play before you die, by Tony Mott, the fantastic editor of Edge magazine. Mist was rendered entirely on stock colour Macintoshes using only the Stratasvision software, don't you know? And until the success of Mist, the Miller brothers ran Cyan exclusively from their basement. Master of Orion often abbreviated as MOO, stands as a turn-based masterpiece within the realm of 4X science fiction strategy games. In this immersive title, players assume the role of a leader of one of ten diverse races, each vying for galactic dominance. Achieving this goal requires a delicate balance of diplomacy and conquest, all whilst advancing technology, exploration across the cosmos, and establishing colonies across distant star systems. Often likened to a sci-fi twist on the classic Civilization series, Master of Orion has endured the test of time, earning a devoted following and cult classic status within the niche of science fiction themed 4X strategy games. Whilst 
playing as the Melkars, I appreciate I'm probably saying that wrong, one of the names of the leaders picked randomly from the pool of names in the name LBX file is TX1138, likely a reference to George Lucas's movie THX1138, which he himself often jokes to throughout the Star Wars movies. I was going to start this section by talking to you about current affairs, but then I realised I've never actually had an affair with a current, so I guess I'll just stick to telling you what was going on in September 1998. Infograms Entertainment and Canal Plus launched the Game One television channel, and I'd also like to point out that September 1998 saw the release of Metal Gear Solid. If you'd like to know more about that classic title, please do check out our retrospective review. There's a link in the description down below. Check it out after this video. Body Harvest, an action-adventure video game designed for the N64. It was created by DMA Designs and was originally slated as an N64 launch title, but the game faced delays caused by its original publisher, Nintendo. This delay was due to concerns regarding the game's violent nature and ultimately leading to Nintendo dropping the title from its lineup. Consequently, DMA Design had to seek out a new publisher. The game eventually found its home under the banner of Midway Games and Gremlin Interactive, where it was published in 1998. Body Harvest can be seen as a bit of a precursor to the Grand Theft Auto series. It was developed by DMA Design, who later became Rockstar North and the game shares many features including free roaming and uh, the ability to switch between travelling on foot or in a vehicle and also the ability to you know, enter buildings. The uh, on-screen objective indicator and minimap are also very familiar. In GTA San Andreas there is actually a mission called Body Harvest in which you uh, have to steal a combine harvester. And of course Body Harvest appears in book 1001 video games you must play before you die by Tony Mott. I'd rather blame the fools. Now you're thinking. Spyro the Dragon, a platform game created by the talented team at Insomniac Games and published by Sony Computer Entertainment exclusively for the PlayStation. Serving as the inaugural installment in the Spyro series, the game revolves around the adventures of the titular character, a youthful purple dragon named Spyro and his trusty dragonfly companion Sparks. The narrative unfolds in the Dragon Kingdom, where Spyro embarks upon a heroic quest to thwart the malevolent nasty Gnork, who has seized control of the five dragon homeworlds by imprisoning the other dragons in crystals and transforming their precious horde of gems into a formidable army of minions. Thank you for releasing me. Right, Carlos Alcaraz, I'm probably saying that name wrong, provides the voice talent for Spyro the Dragon, and he talks about the different voices it used in Spyro the Dragon in a uh, video clip on the making of Spyro the Dragon, which appears on one of the PlayStation Underground jam packed discs. At the time, most 3D games limited the distance because of technical limitations, thus creating the illusion of fog. Now, in Spyro the Dragon, it featured a brand new panoramic 3D. 3D graphics engine that was specifically created for the PlayStation that provided a larger viewing distance without the fog, don't you know? You know what, it's been some time since we've done a giveaway. What's in the jackpot this week? Um, well, uh, there's a, a pot of jam, uh, an elastic stocking, uh, a rancid pork pie, a tennis racket press, uh, Dr. Catamold's Lightning Horse Purge, uh, £3.50 in counterfeit money, and uh, oh, what looks like a, a bread pudding that's uh, been in there for some weeks now. Well, I mean, yeah, it's worth winning, isn't it? And to be in with a chance to win, all you've got to do is be subscribed to this channel and best make sure that you click the bell so that you can thank your lucky stars. It wasn't you that won when we announced the winner. And we'll also be putting it up on our other social media platforms, so make sure you follow us there as well. And you know, if you know someone who uh, loves retro video games, is maybe missing a stocking, never has anything to put on their toast in the morning, and is maybe quite partial of gone-off meat in a parcel of pastry, then share this video with them. 
But for now, let's get back to the golden age of gaming and reminiscing about these iconic titles from September 2003. We have arrived at September 2003, a year that saw Valve release their game distribution software Steam out of beta. Do not forget right, everybody bloody hated it when it first came out. We also saw Nintendo stop production of the NES and Super NES worldwide and Silicon Dreams, the studio, was defunct. And the rest of us were playing... Dungeons & Dragons Heroes, an action-packed video game that combines hack and slash gameplay with RPG elements. This exciting title found its publisher in Atari Interactive and was brought to life by their subsidiary Hunt Valley Development Studio. Initially released exclusively for the Xbox, the game immerses players in a rich and captivating Dungeons & Dragons universe. You have the option to embark upon your adventure solo or join forces with up to four players. The narrative unfolds as players assume the roles of four heroic individuals who have been reincarnated for a crucial mission. Homeworld 2, a real-time strategy video game developed by Relic Entertainment and published by the now defunct Sierra Entertainment. Serving as a sequel to the original Homeworld, Homeworld 2 takes the franchise in an exciting new direction, marked by notable improvements in graphics and audio enhancements. A departure from the original game's closely similar Kirshen and Trident forces, Homeworld 2 introduces distinct designs and application differences between the Vega and Hegaran spaceships, adding depth and diversity to the gameplay experience. Primary couplings released. September 2013 now, a year that saw the Tokyo Game Show happen at Makura Messi in Tokyo and the Eurogamer Expo in 2013 happened in Earl's Court in London. But before we talk about those games that are technically not retro but will probably surprise you they are now 10 years old, what do you think of our list so far? Please be sure to tell us in the comments down below. We love hearing from all of you. That's a 9mm semi-automatic pushed against your skull. Grand Theft Auto V, a blockbuster action-adventure game developed by Rockstar North and published by Rockstar Games. It stands as the seventh primary installment in the renowned Grand Theft Auto series and marks the 15th entry in the franchise overall. The game's immersive narrative unfolds within the fictional state of San Andreas, inspired by South California. In the single-player story, players assume the role of three diverse protagonists, a retired bank robber, Michael DeSanta, the street-smart gangster, Franklin Clinton, and the violent drug dealer and arms trafficker, Trevor Phillips. Together, they embark on daring heists while facing pressure from a corrupt government agency and formidable crime organisations. Grand Theft Auto V boasts an expansive open world design, granting players the freedom to explore the picturesque open countryside of San Andreas and the fictional metropolis of Los Santos, which is modelled after Los Angeles. That the place? Yeah, just the place, man. Yes, GTA V is 10 years old and came out three gaming generations ago, yet it's still playable today on the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. I'm sorry. Play, what was that? PlayStation? PlayStation 5? I've been bloody well playing it on PlayStation 3. Anyway, did you know that the uh, Balvado Banshee, the in-game unlicensed imitation of the Dodge Viper, was built in real life from an actual Dodge Viper by West Coast Customs? Both the interior and the exterior were modelled on the in-game vehicle. It had a brand new custom-made body and a multi-track audio system were also added. In total, the value of the customization reached about, I think it was about $200,000, and they were awarded by GameStop in 2013 as part of their Power Up Reward giveaway. Now, as of late March 2015, the car has been sold by its owner three times. This is probably due to its hardly affordable upkeep. Total War Rome 2, a strategic video game crafted by the Creative Assembly and brought to players by Sega exclusively for PC. 
marking the eighth standalone instalment in the esteemed Total War series of video games, it follows in the footsteps of the 2004 classic Rome Total War. Upon its release, Rome 2 garnered generally positive reviews from critics, however it faced significant criticism due to notable technical issues. Despite these challenges, the game achieved commercial success, outperforming all other titles in the Total War series in terms of sales and number of concurrent players on its launch day. Oh, I say, could there be a new Dugatorial in the works? Well, if you want that to happen, you best head over to Mr. B's ukulele channel. Link in the uh, description down below. Tell him that we sent you and that you'd love to see a new season of Dugatorial. And with that, if you're still watching, thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. If you're not subscribed to the channel, then please do so. That way you'll be in the know when we upload new videos. It should be Friday, but who bloody knows? Until then, I'll leave you with this. Do hummingbirds hum because they've forgotten the words? Cheerio, see you soon.